please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. Boy, it was easier for me to stand up this time with my new knee than two weeks ago, that's for sure. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, roll call, please. Sandy Kufel? Here. Chris O'Regan? Here. Christy Hilton? Here. Artie Bryson? Here. Cindy Valentine? Here. Joanne Shirky? Here. Mark Bouchard? Here. Okay, we're all here and are present and count for it. We do have a quorum. I'll entertain a motion to pay some bills. I'll make a motion for bills payable in the amount of $146,857.24. Support. Motion and support. Any discussion, questions? <clears throat> Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Sandy Kufel? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Next, we have public comments. Do we have any public comments at this time? Going once? Twice. Okay, no public comments. <clears throat> uh, consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion for the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda consisting of the board meeting of October 1st, 2018 and synopsis, check reports, the August water report, September assessing building zoning code enforcement reports, October parks and rec updates, the road watch notice, uh, Police Department resignation of Officer Pulverente and a request from Wendy Meldrum for BSNA training in the amount of $205. Support. Okay, a motion and all kinds of support. <coughs> Does anyone have any questions or do we need to pull anything out? Hearing none, all in favor of the consent agenda as presented, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone oppose? Motion carries. Okay, brace yourself for the supervisor's report. Okay, strap yourself in. Uh, as I said in my supervisor's report, we had lots of road stuff going on. Uh, St. John's Drive, that road project was completed this past week, uh, Tuesday, I believe. Turned out pretty nice. Uh, I, has anyone drove it by any chance? Uh, they, they did the um, overlay of asphalt and uh, it looks real good around the manholes and everything and and um, looks like a, to be a pretty good job. Um, also wanted to mention they did complete the uh, paving on the northern part of the township on Marsh. It goes all the way up to Chartier. And uh, part of that job was also they replaced two culverts going across Marsh. And they did the, uh, the sward out road from Marl Road to Starville, uh, about a mile of paving there. <clears throat> Started to replace the uh, first bridge on Anchor Bay Drive. <clears throat> and it's gonna be a one way, uh, it's, gonna, there's gonna, it's gonna be a one lane road going over that bridge till the job's completed. Um, <clears throat> we did get notice uh, last week I think it was Tuesday. <clears throat> they were, and how they're how they're doing this? They cut the bridge basically in half. They tear down. They tear tear one half out. They leave the other half for traffic, and then they they build new. The the half they tore out, then they'll rebuild the other half of the bridge. And <clears throat> excuse me, they uh, they're inspected the inspecting the beams underneath the uh, old bridge that they're using and. They're quite a bit worse than they uh, anticipated. So they're actually contemplating of uh, condemning that bridge and you know, that won't work because that's the only way on and off the, the, the people on those uh, roads. So what they did, they restrict the weight to 10 tons until the, the um, other half of the bridge can be completed. And they expedited the construction on that and they're hoping to have that done, the, the first half that they're rebuilding, uh, at the end of this week or mid to next week, depending on weather. <clears throat> at that point, they will raise the tonnage uh, allowed back up to 40 ton. 
Um, so for about a week, week and a half, we have a 10 ton bridge, which it doesn't wholly or hold a whole lot. Uh, garbage trucks have an issue, um, you know, construction trucks and everything. Uh, we do the best we can to notify everything of the change, the school buses and everything else. It was, I was on the horn to calling everybody. So it's gonna be inconvenient for about a week. <clears throat> More on, uh, on uh, roads, good news. We've, uh, we've secured all the federal, state, and county grants to replace the Flamingo Bridge, the Flamingo Road Bridge. Um, and they really changed the criteria on these. Uh, when we did the Merrill Street Bridge, it was considerably easier. We were only dealing with St. Clair in competition with other bridges in St. Clair County. And what they did for this federal and the state grant, we are now in competition with bridges in Macomb, Oakland, Wayne County, basically Southeast Michigan. <clears throat> and uh, they also uh, raised the requirements um, of, of uh, funding these bridge replacements to bridges that handle more than 8,000 cars a day. That's a, a significant amount of traffic. But uh, <clears throat> good news is we've we secured the grant for Flamingo Bridge. We were the only bridge in these four or five counties that got a funding that was under 8,000 cars. We we're the only bridge. <clears throat> and um, uh, how, how it works, uh, the engineering will start in 19 next year to do this bridge. And um, once that's done, the construction right now, will, we're saying it's gonna be a 19, or 2020, but if something happens uh, next year where you know it, it deems necessary, we can get a, um, it's called emergency construction date start, so we could start sooner. <clears throat> So that's good news. <clears throat> the, the, the total cost right now for this bridge is 900,000. By the time we get all these, bridge, all these grants, the federal, state, and county grants, it will end up costing the township around 5,000. So it's definitely worth doing all the work and paperwork and everything. And another thing too, this, this bridge we can't cut in half and keep half open like we have uh, the other bridges. Um, because how it's uh, constructed. So what we're gonna do is uh, put, bring in a temporary bridge, a, basically a floating bridge alongside it. And that's what the traffic will, will be using to uh, during the construction. And to save some of the costs to the township and everybody else, I, I kind of lobbied the road commission. I goes, you know, you guys should really need a floating bridge for this kind of stuff. So they're actually agreeing to buy it off the contractor who has to buy it for the for the project. You know, so the county will have a floating bridge out of the deal. So, um, <clears throat> the DDA is in the process of uh, replacing our electronic sign in front of the, the township hall. They wanted to do that for us, get a nice color uh, sign and that uh, they just pulled it down in the middle of last week so that's why we don't have our sign out in front and uh, part of that too is they, they're actually going to refurbish that sign and move it over to our mainland fire station because there's a lot of people going to the high school and stuff that use that road and it'd be a good spot for putting community services out so we'll have a refurbished sign in front of the uh, the mainland fire station and a new sign out in front. Hopefully in two, three weeks that will be done. Um, also the, the DDA uh, approved a facade, $5,000 facade grant for 5309 Point Trumbull. That's the old, oh, the dog, uh, they sold dog. Cooper's canine. Yes, Cooper's, Cooper's, what was it called? Cooper's canine. Cooper's canine. And uh, someone bought it and they're converting it into uh, an office building. We used to, we have been doing a lot of facade grants. In fact, most of the businesses in the district has had facade grants in the past and how it works that the, if it's in the district, the DDA will, get, will give the property owner matching funds up to $5,000. In yeah. other words, if they spend 10 grand, the DDA will refund five grand. And that, that really spurred a lot of our businesses to improve the facades. So just about everyone's done it. 
uh, up and down the path from St. Clair Flax Taxi Dermy to, I mean, a lot of them. And that's a, a very good program. There's not too many uh, properties that haven't done it yet, and this is one of them that did not. So <clears throat> I attended an information meeting. It was, it was kind of interesting about the East China Power Plant that's going in. They're hoping that it will be online on, in 2022 in March of 2022, actually, and it's gonna employ about five to 600 people. And uh, it's gonna be very efficient. How, how it basically is gonna run, it's, got, it's gonna have two big gas turbines that will be natural gas fired and, and will uh, create electricity. And off that, it, it creates a lot of heat. And then they'll take that heat and they'll put it towards a smaller steam turbine which will turn you know they'll take that heat turn into steam and it'll turn a third turbine will also uh create a lot of um our electricity and it's very efficient and uh it's it's it, it was interesting i was in discussions on how they're going to get all these people in and out of uh, off the work to the plant you know on m29 and the back roads and uh other things like that. I asked a question, well, what are they going to do with the old existing plant? Are they going to tear it down or whatever? They, they just said, they're not going to, no plans to tear it down, they're going to shut it down. Basically, he said, DTE is good at shutting down plants, but not good at tearing them down. So, and just FYI too, the old power plant in um, Canada is Port Lambton. If you go down the river, you see, you see a big Port Lambton building on it. That building, uh, Canadian uh, Hydro is going to tear that one down here pretty soon. <clears throat> um, and this is for the, the boils for everyone, but um, I wanted to mention there's been a lot of discussions with um, about our sewer system with the county the past few weeks. <clears throat> um, our sewer collection system, I should call it. Um, a little bit of history back in. 1975, uh, the, co the county built our, our wastewater treatment plant and the initial uh, sewer system on the mainland. And uh, in 1975, they turned it over to the municipalities. <clears throat> so the plant is actually owned by Clay Township, Ira Township, and the city of Alignac by percentages of what we use. And um, and uh, we got you know this big long document when they turned it over to us and in the whole collection system <clears throat> there's basically two parts um i want to get this right the the main part the big trunk that goes along m29 and up toward, towards the north part of the township through algonac through ira and uh along m29 to the the plant is is it's called the the interceptor sewer and sewer system and it also involves these pumping stations <clears throat> then the rest of the collection system is owned by like in the township us is the feeder lines that go into this big trunk line if you, if you will i hope that makes sense and um all along the whole time that they the county's been telling us that the township's responsible for for all of it uh, the respective municipalities, Elgnac, Clay, and Ira, and um, we're responsible for maintaining it and everything ourselves. And uh, lo and behold, we went back and found some paperwork in 1975 that basically it says um, when they turned it over, the interceptor sewer and pumping stations, the main trunk, will be maintained by the county, not us. And the rest of the collection system will be maintained by the township. So I brought this up to the county. Let me back up. So we own, all three municipalities own the, the, the plant and everything. We pay St. Clair County uh, Depart St. Clair County to manage it for us. So they've been managing the plant for us, and they, they do a pretty good job. But like I say, the county's been saying, no, this is up you know, for you guys to maintain, and, and, and you're, you guys are responsible for it. <clears throat> we just did some work at our uh, lift station by Pearl Beach. And my question was, 
100% of iris, we'll call it wastewater, mm -hmm. goes through that in our system. What part, don't they have any ownership of it? You know, why, why is it just clay? And same thing in Elgnac, we have, you know, there's north part of clay, then there's Elgnac. And if there's a problem with Elgnac, you know, part of our wastewater goes through that system too. It wouldn't just be Elgnac. And uh, that's what spurred it. And so we, we found the old paperwork that said, basically said the county is still responsible for maintaining this main trunk of, of, of the lines. And so I brought it to their attention. We're gonna have a, a meeting. Uh, I don't have a date set. I'm just getting back online really with my surgery, but we're gonna set up a date in the next week or two and to discuss this. I just wanna bring it to the board's attention that uh, yeah, what they've been telling us and what is, is true is, is two different things. So um, ultimately we will, you know, we will have to pay for our share. And we know, actually we know the percentage of, of, of wastewater is, you know, generated from clay and from IRA and Elginac. But uh, that will be worked out. But main thing is I want to know who's responsible for maintaining it. Uh, let's see. Good research. What's that? Good research. Thank you. Um, we got, oh, right now, this is way cool. It's going on right now next door. Our, our, uh, the police are do, is doing the hunter safety course. We have 50 kids enrolled. We, this is our sixth year we've been doing it. And it's free for everybody. And uh, uh, I know they got a, a full, full, uh, it's full of kids and uh, their parents, and that's that's a very good program. There's all kinds of uh, rec programs that we have going on. If you're on Facebook, go to Clay Township Parks and Rec and like that page. Um, but we have tons of stuff going on. I'll just mention a few things. We have a bus trip going to a Lions game December 2nd, 71 bucks, and that includes a ticket. We have Yoga classes starting in December. We have a 20, 20, 20, I think it was that, 20 cardio, 20% 20 uh, uh, stretching and 20%. It's 20% cardio, or 20 minutes of cardio, 20 minutes of weights, and 20 weights. minutes of... Um, core. Yeah. Core, yeah. That's uh, starting also in December, and guts and glutes starting in, uh, in December to all classes. Um, two weeks from yesterday, the last Saturday in uh, September or October, we're doing our Scarecrow Festival and that's been a real popular festival. And we're amping it up more this year. We're having the face painting still again. Uh, we're having scarecrow competitions, and then we have stuff where people can come and make their own scarecrows. That's real popular. I think we got it set up for about 120, 150 people can make scarecrows and take it home. The kids love that. Uh, I know we're going to have um, uh, photo ops with uh, Brenda Lewis. You can take uh, uh, family pictures. This is all for free. Um, make and take scarecrows. I mentioned that. We have a magician coming, Andy Marka. M-A-K-A-R. He's a good musician. No, magic, not musician. Magic man. Ma magic man. Magician. My tang gets tongued. Uh, <laughs> we have Halloween artists and vendors coming. The Paw Patrol uh, is going to be there. We have uh, dancing lessons, so you can learn how to do the thriller. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson thriller going on. Uh, let's see, a trunk and treat. We have a 61 foot obstacle course people can run through. I don't know if they'll beat Joanne's time or not. And uh, all kinds of fun stuff that day. This is the last Saturday in, uh, from 12 to 5 on Halloween, or the last Saturday of October. And uh, that's about all I have. So thank you. Okay, uh, next we have nothing unfinished business. New business. First thing we have to do our, on the agenda is to reappoint Whitey Simons to the Planning Commission. 
I uh, he sent me an email with his uh, he'd like to be reappointed, and I'm recommending to the board that uh, we reappoint Whitey as to our planning commission for a three-year term. I'll make a motion to appoint Whitey Simon to the planning commission, Clay Township. Support. Yeah, motion to support. Any uh, um, any uh, comments or anything? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Next, we have uh, to reappoint, reappoint Tom Kozell. I did not get in writing yet from him if he wishes to do that, so I would like to make a motion that we table that till the next meeting. Support. Okay, we have uh, motion and support. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of tabling uh, reappointment of Tom Kozell, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion, uh, anyone oppose? Motion carries. <coughs> Next is the reappointment of Mark Bouchard, our planning commission, our board rep. Mark, do you want to be reappointed? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we reappoint Mark Bouchard to the planning commission, terms 11 15 2018 to 11 15 of 2021. Support. Okay, motion and support. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, anyone opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Mark. Congratulations, Mark. All right, next we have a new hire for electrical inspector. Um, we, we've had in the past where, our, well, Sid is our building inspector and our, also our electrical inspector. Sometimes he's on vacation or sick or can't get to it or at conferences or something. I, 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 it's nice to have a backup because I sure, the building department is really busy. And have been. How's that? And have been. And have been. And it's nice to have a backup if someone needs an electrical inspection done. And that's basically what this is all about. Um, so I'll entertain a motion. Everybody afraid to pronounce his last yeah. name? Yeah. Because I'll make the motion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have know. the same issue. I, I'm I like, yeah, that I'm going to say too. his last name again. So uh, Yaro, I will make Yaroch? a motion that we Yaroch. hire Yaroch. Um, Anthony. One more time, Chris. Yaro. 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 <laughs> um, as Yaro. a part-time electrical inspector. Support. Want to say effective immediately? Effective immediately. Thank you. Support. Put them out tomorrow? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have motion and support. Any discussion? He looks as though he's highly qualified. Okay. Yep. Is, uh, is he resume? here? No. I yes, think, he Oh, is. yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey. Come on, Chicago. So, how do you pronounce your last name? Yarrow. 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 Were you giggling back there while we were struggling? Yeah. Sorry. Right. I saw him giggling. <laughs> so I figured he was here. Yeah. You, Thank you, you for coming. You yeah. live in the township? Yes, oh, okay. Awesome. Who, uh... Who will he uh, direct report to? Uh, well, Cindy would, if, if we need an inspection by him, Cindy would, would call him and notify him. So um, Cindy will dispatch? Yep. Yeah, she's the coordinator. Okay. Cindy Babish. So he will report to Cindy? Or does he report to you? He, he reports oh, I, really to the building department. Yeah. To Sid? To Sid and okay. me. Okay. So. Okay. Any questions, Andy or Anthony? Are you are you Andy or Anthony? Yeah. Anthony. Any questions, Anthony, before we yeah. throw you in the pit? <laughs> okay. Well, I certainly don't have a problem with uh, with appointing that. Was just was this posted or anything like that, or how was it uh, come about? Referred referral or? Um, it was it was referred, and we've been looking for a while. Okay. So. He said he's uh, pretty well qualified. So yep. I'm good at that. His expiration date of uh, his license is in December. I assume you'll. Yeah, that's my contractor's. Yeah. My master's. Okay. Mm -hmm. My inspector's license is 21. Okay. 21. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of hiring Anthony Yarrow? Yarrow. 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 
Signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Congratulations. Anthony. Welcome aboard. Okay, next we have a new invoicing system, uh, cloud payments. Chrissy, you want to take it away? Um, yep. Yeah. Invoice cloud is an electronic um, payment processing, the third party. So I'm recommending that we um, use invoice cloud to replace the company that we're currently using called Point and Pay. Um, we were introduced to invoice cloud through a BSNA user group meeting. Um, so they are fully integrated with BSNA. Uh, all the payments would be live into the system. And I've spoke about it at a couple other meetings. They offer a lot of the same thing that Point and Pay currently has, and then they offer some new things, which are um, paperless billing, um, reminders. You can connect, uh, if you sign up for their service, you can connect your calendar. so you get your your bills are automatically put into your whatever calendar use you're using if it's google or i can't think of all the different calendars right now <laughs> um text reminders you can pay via text you can set up recurring payments so recurring payments is big they, we've got we get so many requests i go to florida all winter and you know i don't get my mail down there so good and yeah and it, if you set up a recurring payment through your checking account, like an ACH payment, that is much, much, much cheaper than currently what we're what they're using. An e-check through Point and Pay is three percent right now. <clears throat> this company is a ninety-five cents if you set up a recurring payment, so it's a lot cheaper. That's a good thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Better, faster, and it's cheaper for our customers too. Um, they have double encryption through their website, so they've never had a data breach. Um, they are level one PCI compliant, so that's the highest level of um, payment card processing service you can have. Better than Target? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> when. Uh if we give us the blessing, when can, when would this take effect? Well, it when takes. Can we throw the switch? It'll take them about 90 days. Okay. Typical. It's, he said it's somewhere between the shortest time it's been is 45 days. The longest they anticipate is 90. So, I'm hoping by the first of the year, if we get going on it, we can have it up and running. Are we locked in for any length of time? No. Mm -mm. Make a motion, Chrissy. Is this the same um, same payment structure that you were um, kicking around in the last meeting? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. and you've uh, you've done your homework on on several methods of payment, correct? Yes. And this is the one that that you're recommending to us based on usability, fees, reliability. Yeah, I feel security. like this one has the most to offer um, as far as. All the you know we were looking for ACH through the bank, um, and that wouldn't be at any cost, but it would be a lot of paperwork for us to maintain. This is all if if a customer signs up through their system, it goes live into our system. We don't have to we don't touch any account numbers. We don't have to check any boxes. It's all automated. And then we asked what if a customer changes their email address or something like that. That is that comes through a report. And that goes into the system as well. So we don't have to touch any of that. And we would actually get a, if they're getting a bounce back notification that an email address is no good anymore, we would actually get a report to let us know so that we can send out a paper bill. And it's cheaper to use this than it is for us to send out a paper bill. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I will say over the last few years, anytime we've gone to the MTA, we've gone into the vendor. Um, areas even you know before Christy was here we've been looking for a few years because that point and pay can be expensive when you're trying to do it through um, yeah. the online portal and especially if you're paying taxes it's not something you want to pay through but um, there hasn't been anything there hasn't been anything so it's yeah. nice to see that someone's finally being competitive with them and that they're through BSNA so yes and that's gonna be yeah. probably the biggest part is that they're part of BSNA. integrated <clears throat> yeah already mm -hmm. And the uh, auditors are okay uh, with yes. this system? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So 
So I, I suppose our customers or their, uh, they would be a mandatory sign-in once we switch over to the other system. They're going well, to have to sign up. Well, it's not mandatory. Right? They don't have to sign up to use it, but it, I think it would be beneficial, and it definitely is cheaper than point and pay. So if they choose to use it, mm -hmm. I think people will love it once I, they get going on it. Once the bugs are out, I think we should try, try to direct people to do that because oh, yeah. it's cheaper right, for them and us. Yeah. A lot good. of our residents like coming in to pay. Right. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion. I will make a motion to approve um, using invoice cloud processing for our electronic processing of payments. Support. Yeah, motion and support. Any discussion? <clears throat> I just want to mention, because I, I, I've had several people you know, ask me, oh, Artie, how come if you're, if you know, I'm paying something electronically for, for the township, and it's like this for all municipalities, why do I have to pay the convenience fee? <clears throat> In private businesses, most of them, they, they, they eat it. Uh, you know, there's, to, to take a credit card, <clears throat> to process a credit card, there's a fee back towards the, you know, the businesses and, and the township. But it's really not uh, even legal. But uh, it's not average to say if, if you come into the township, you want to pay something by a credit card. Um, basically, you're putting the burden of, it, of the convenience on it on all the taxpayers. And you know that's really a, a unjust, a unjust fee to the taxpayers that don't use the convenience fee, if that makes sense. So that's why. Basically, uh, and, and they'll tell you, it's like, you know, it's against the law for us to pass it to, along to uh, the, uh, or it's, 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 a, it's against the law for us to absorb the convenience fees of doing credit card processing by uh, uh, these, these credit cards, you know, because it's not fair to the rest of the taxpayers that, you know, do it by check or come in person. And uh, basically, that's why. Um, but the system's definitely cheaper than point and pay, which we've been using. And I just want to make that clarification why that we have to do the service charges. And, and actually, we're not the ones that are processing. Right. We don't process right. it. We don't collect. They do. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> They're charging a they're charging a flat, flat fee, fee on a credit card or a debit card. But if you're if you sign up for a one time check payment, it's a dollar ninety five. If you sign up for a recurring check payment, and this is on utility or tax, okay. it's ninety five cents. Okay, and then do you know what do you know what their fee is for a credit card or debit card? For credit card or debit card on utility bill, it will be three dollars and twenty five cents up to four hundred. So if you have a bill that you're paying that's over 400 utility, yeah. then you would have to make multiple payments because there are there's a visa regulation that does not allow them to charge a convenience fee on a utility payment. Oh. So it's a flat fee of $3.25 up to $400. On taxes, okay. it's 2.75%. Okay. Point and pay was 3%. So. Okay, any other discussion? This is in con it's not it's not a contract, it's just an agreement, right? Um, yeah, there isn't a contract. No, okay. All in favor of, uh, do we, we do have a motion, don't we? Mm -hmm. Motion and support. Yep, okay, all in favor of uh, switching our uh, electronic processing to invoice cloud payments, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone oppose? Motion carries. <clears throat> Next, we have resolution 2018 uh, anti vaping ordinance number 143. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 2018 47, um, which is an anti vape ordinance number 143. Support. support. <laughs> motion and support. We, uh, 
We, we handed this out to you guys, uh, to the board via email, and we, we did make a few adjustments uh, with some concerns. Basically, this anti-vaping ordinance basically says that uh, you cannot sell these vape pipes or related um, uh, supplies, I guess you would call it, <clears throat> to minors. And it's just like cigarettes, they, they gotta be 18. And there's no vaping on school property. This is a big problem in the mm -hmm. schools. And they came to us and asked us for help help with this with, by the tune of an ordinance. So, uh, so um, they can't be, uh, they gotta be at least 18 to purchase it in the township. <clears throat> and there's no vaping on school and public property, right? On school grounds. On school grounds. <clears throat> so anywhere on school grounds. Yep. I'll entertain a motion. We have a motion. Oh, That's you got support. a motion. Support. Support. Okay. Any more discussion? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'd just like to touch on this just a little bit. I I spent a lot of time at the school. Um, I've talked to the principal. I've talked to the athletic director. I've talked to the vice principal. I've talked to some teachers. Um, I talked to our resource officer. Um, I spent a lot of time on this because I wasn't sure how I felt about it initially as a township um, coming into this vape ordinance for the schools, um, that portion of the, the ordinance. This is a huge distraction for the Algonac School District right now. Um, to the tune where between three and six kids every day get busted vaping in the bathrooms, and it could probably be 25 or more if they really spent the time to police it. So the distraction aspect of this is really, really big. Um, we don't want to punish the kids. We don't want to fine the kids. But what we do need is a strong deterrent to keep this out of our school district. Um, so that is the that is my intention, and while why I will support this resolution um, is is to keep that off of our school grounds. Um, I think it's important to eliminate distractions. Education is very difficult as it is. Uh, reduce state funding and et cetera, et cetera. We we need to we need to eliminate all possible distractions. So. Um, did we get into the civil fines um, as part of it? Go for it. So I'm just going to speak to the parents and the younger generation for a moment, the, the kids that are actually in the school. Um, there are three steps or levels to, to this ordinance. Um, the first step um, will consist of uh, a $50 fine that the student or person that is caught vaping will be responsible for. Um, right now, um, a lot of the, the kids, will, the, if they're caught, they come down to the office, they get a slap on the hand, they get sent home. Well, most of them are okay with that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's okay to get sent home for the day. So we need something with a little more teeth something that's going to really strongly deter them uh, from vaping in school. The second violation for these kids, the second violation uh, is punishable by a fine of not more than $100. So we go from 50 to 100 on your second violation. If you are caught a third time vaping on school premise, that fine jumps to $300, 300 bucks. And there is, um, there is a level of community service that the violator will also be responsible for as part of the agreement. So the ordinance has more language in it. I'm sure we'll have it posted online. You're welcome to read it. Um, but in a, in a nutshell, we're trying to have a strong deterrent uh, to support our high school staff, our resource officer that we put over there, and have them focus on the things that are, that are more important. Chris, question, how is their smoking, just regular smoking policy? Um, you know, is, it, is it about like the same thing? Not $300, but they're caught in the bathroom smoking. But. 
I. It says or alternative. Yep, yeah, alternative, right? So I, I would assume that they're going to go hand in hand. Yeah. But but I am not going to pronounce that that I'm going to be a, an expert on on that topic. But they I, I don't do know have they do have some they do regulations about smoking. They do, and I spend a lot of time at the school, a lot of time, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm here to tell you that there's not too many young people that smoke inside the school. The uh, vaping is so much easier to hide. Yeah. yeah. Than mm -hmm. cigarettes. So. Yeah, just for the the sheer you know smell. Right, if you're if the kids are smoking, you know you're not going to get by a, a resource officer or th by your teachers, and yeah. you just stink. you just won't. You'll, you'll smell. Stink, yeah. yeah, you'll smell. <laughs> uh, vaping is a little different. You know, it's a different game. Um, so I think we have the motion. We have support. We have motion support, and just to let everybody know this this would be in effect. We have to publish it in, in the paper, and it goes in effect 30 days after we, we publish it. Any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Christy Hilton? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Joanne Shirk? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Sandy Kufel? Yes. Crystal Reagan? Yes. Okay, motion carries. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is a vehicle purchase. Uh, we're looking to... Uh, Replace our old sad white Taurus that's out in the parking lot. You can hear it falling apart right now. <laughs> <I don't think. laughs> Last time Sherry, you said there's all kinds of buzzers and whistles. <laughs> Again? <laughs> and uh, I won't we, drive, I wouldn't drive it. <laughs> we looked at the Ford Explorer and the, the Flex, and the, the, the Ford Explorer is uh, cheaper. I have to, like uh, the base uh, price for an Explorer of $25,634, or if we want to do four wheel drive, it's $27,447. This is through the state lien. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than. Uh, you and I could buy this vehicle for. I wish I could buy a Explorer for 25 grand. Um, and uh, I guess we'd have to decide if we want the four wheel drive or not. And uh, Is that, you mean front wheel drive? Right. right. Versus front, front wheel or four wheel. Or four wheel. Something goes wrong with a four wheel. You got big bucks to fix it. Yeah. So, and if they're not used, they don't, you got to use them a lot. Don't so. they have an all-wheel drive? Um, only for the police package. Yeah, the police package. That's what I would have Are we in discussion? For. Yeah, well, let's do a motion. Um, I'll nope. do a motion for us to purchase a Ford Explorer, uh, line two, or 101-265-970-00. However, we live in Michigan. Um, the car does get used for a lot of training travel um, to Upper Michigan, so I would, my motion would be for the 4x4. Four four. Support. Okay, a motion and support. We'll open up for discussion. Um, if we would get the use of a four by four, right. and you just stated, which it makes sense. Well, we're always going yeah. to, to Grand Rapids, yeah, we're Traverse going to City, Traverse wherever. City, yeah. uh, Midland, uh, we're going all over the place. And yeah. Sherry, I mean, you, you get in some, uh, doing your assessing, some. Yeah, new construction out in the fields and stuff. You know, she's driving down in driveways mud. in our, yeah. that are just mm -hmm. dirt. Mm -hmm. That would be well worth it, yeah. My wife has driven a Ford Explorer for probably the last 10 or more years. Um, in, in the first six years or so, it was a, a two-wheel drive model. And it was awful in the snow. Awful. They have an a anti-slip uh, traction device that alternates power. And, and frankly, I, I, I didn't care for it, not one little bit. Like driving a pickup with nothing in it. Yep. <laughs> yep. It, it doesn't put the power um, to the road um, in incremental weathers. It, it, it just will not. Um, it kind of takes over for you, which I, I didn't find you know an enjoyable experience. <laughs> and for the money difference um, yeah. at this price, um, you know, I, I 
I think it's a pretty easy decision for me. I did put thirty thousand dollars for in the budget for this uh, line item too, so it is budgeted, and, and we it, it would be under budget. Yeah. And, and also, uh, you know, as far as driver uh, education is concerned, uh, not to use the four wheel, the, you know, four wheel drive mode uh, during drive payments, and only use it when necessary. That'll take wear and tear mm -hmm. off the system. Uh, just as a note, I would prefer to see an all-wheel drive vehicle, uh, which is a lot less expensive to operate and as well as the repairs are concerned. You don't have that uh, big transfer case in an all-wheel drive vehicle. But uh, since we don't have that option right now, uh, and though it is more expensive, although it costs less for the manufacturer to make than to make a real true four-wheel drive, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, I agree with Cindy on the 4 by 4 I was leaning towards silver. We have blue, black, white, or silver. <laughs> Would that be the your your vehicle, uh, Artie? Uh, well, it was the townships. I, I yeah, share I it with Sherry and and whoever go, goes on training. You know, we go to Lansing a lot for BS and A training. Uh, Black's hard to keep clean. Black, white's hard white's to keep hard clean. To blue. See. Yeah. We don't want blue. Silver? Okay. Any more discussion? Roll call vote, please. Well, wait, what are we bidding on? What are we? Uh, the motion is to purchase Explorer 4x4 at 27477 Okay. Yeah, 447 Okay. So, uh, roll call vote, please. Me. Artie Bryson. Yes. Cindy Valentine. Yes. Joanne Shirky. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Sandy Kufel. Yes. Crystal Reagan. Does this cover any <laughs> graphics package? No. We'll, we'll, we'll put, put a sticker on that on later. It. Yeah. We'll put a sticker on it. Yes. <laughs> Christy Hilton. Yes. Hey, what? Morrison carries. <laughs> Next, we uh, we put out some bids, uh, and Chris can elaborate on this some more. We put out some uh, bids to uh, do the uh, work on the Harsons Island Fire Department of redoing the uh, updating the kitchen and the bathrooms. Uh, we've been uh, this is much needed for a long, long time. And uh, how many bids did you send out, Chris? Chief and I sent out five bids. Five bids, and we received three back. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, we emailed them all to uh, to the board. But uh, Chris is this is kind of his line of business, so I asked Chris to review them and give the board a recommendation. So you want to go ahead and do that, Chris? Yeah. So maybe a month and a half, two months ago, the chief and I, um, some firefighters. Um, um, Joanne, I think, was there. We, we walked the Harsons Island Fire Hall, and we we identified at the fire hall some of the important building needs. The building itself, the structure is aging, and it needs some updates. Specifically, uh, we looked at some of the the big, bigger type items, um, which included uh, the bathroom, uh, the shower area, um, the kitchen. Uh, the bunk rooms uh, and and some some light work on the commons area. So what we did after that is we've sort of identified and itemized what we would like to see done in those areas, and we created a a scope um, with line item uh, detail, and we shipped this scope out um, without any of the numbers to five uh, building contractors in our area, and we'll call them local builders. Three of the five submitted sealed bids uh, to our supervisor uh, on time, and of the three bids, um, it would be my recommendation, uh, after uh, an extensive review of all three bids, and I believe we have them in our packet. Yeah. Um, so we had uh, uh, a bid from Alt Vacancy Solutions, 
Uh, we had a bid from Joe Stevenson Builders, and we had a bid from Star Modernization. Um, the Alt Vacancy Solutions bid came in at 55967 The Joe Stevenson Builders bid came in at $49,500. And the Star Modernization bid came in at $42,453, which was less than what we had budgeted for. Not significantly less, but it was less. It's my recommendation at this time that we, the township hire Star Modernization to perform the said building improvements to the Harsons Island Fire Department. Is that a motion? That's a motion. Do we have support? I'll have, I'll say, I'll support to uh, be able to have a little discussion. Okay. Uh, ask a question. All right. On, um, the last page of Star. It says the electrical bid item. Just a clarification, this item is undefined without specifications. A allowance of 2,000 is factored into the proposal for this line item. If awarded, clarification of this line item will be needed. What does that entail, if your expertise with doing that? Do we have to when anticipate the 2,000 will come up to pay for that? Well, yes, the it is that built factor. in a factor of $2,000 right. worth of electrical services. Okay. So anytime we talk about bathrooms, remodeling, kitchens, um, you talk about um, code issues, uh, which have to do with GFI receptacles, mm -hmm. art fault breakers, hardwired smokes, tamper resistant outlets. Mm -hmm. Um, any wiring that may or may not be to code. Um, so <clears throat> from a construction standpoint, these builders really don't know exactly what they're getting into right. until the walls open up, they inspect the services that are there, and we get some direction from our building department on to, um, you know, how to comply with the current ordinances that exist. So what you're saying is, is the bid won't be over 42,000, may even be less. It may even be less. Mm -hmm. Because there is an allowance, okay. Mm -hmm. Even be less, however, and if they go if in there and they even if it is added on, even if it is added on, it'll still be the lowest bid. It is the lowest yeah. bid of the three of bids the three. that we received. Right. That's all, that's That right. is correct. Who's gonna correct. sign off on any field orders or field uh, changes? The, 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 well, um, I, I would think that it would be a, a combination of the fire chief and our supervisor. Ultimately, I would yeah. believe any change orders would fall on the responsibility of our supervisor. And although I'm not trying to push no, some that's that's okay. the can, no, but that's no problem. would that come back to the board? Depending on the cost. If it's over, it would. But if okay. it's not, it wouldn't. So be mute. Okay. Wouldn't the building inspector have some... Well, he, he signs off on the work. Our new electrical inspector will be on the case. <laughs> I would think that'd be a perfect opportunity. Yeah. Okay, sounds good to me. I, I, I'd, li I'd like to mention that I know the Harson Island, the, the women's group over there, the cattails, they raised, I think it was like $6,000 that they wanted to get put towards the bathrooms and the kitchen, the work needed done. And also, and in this budget, we, cr we created a, sp a special line item to track that. And, and that wasn't done before. And then a couple of years ago, too, there was uh, a donation of $5,000 from these people that had a boating accident that was supposed to be spent on the island, too. And that was also pulled out, pulled out of the, because it wasn't tracked, and it was spelt, spent, that $5,000 was spent elsewhere. <clears throat> I pulled that $5,000 out of the, the fire general fund and put mm -hmm. into that line item. And we just received another $100 for it towards that. So there's, there's 11,000 and I'm not sure exactly what it is, some change, and that money is gonna go towards this also. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. No? Okay, did you have a question? 
I know Brian Trepov, who's the owner of Star Modernization, is currently on. He, he is, I believe, on still on the Zoom board. Is that correct? He, he, yeah, he's on the ZBA. Oh, okay. Board of Appeals. Um, appeals. This, that's uh, obviously. I'm happy. You know, this was a sealed bid. I'm assuming that that has nothing to do with that. And right. If, if the other question I have is, when you made the decision as to which company to go with, did you, was that decision primarily made based on the dollar amount that of the bid? Um, the is there any background on the companies, or do you get do you look at their uh, track record with regards to the quality of their work. Speaking from experience with the particular company in, in mind, um, it, it, it would just be, uh, I think, advantageous for you to make sure that the quality and the warranty of the workmanship is, is followed, followed up on with, with that. I can appreciate your comments. Um, I have uh, 26 years in the, in the building profession. I am a, a professional estimator by trade, and I spent a lot of time qualifying, uh, along with Chief Rose, who exactly these bid packages were going to. Um, we had a couple of criteria that, that were driving our, our decision making, uh, one being we wanted a, a reputable local contractors. Um, so that narrowed our search from about a dozen um, to less than a dozen. And then from there, what we did is we sent out uh, recommendations. Um, we sent out our scope sheets. So what I'm doing today is I'm making a recommendation based on, number one, qualified, pre-qualified contractors, and number two, based on the dollar amount of the bid, the bids that were submitted. So my recommendation is based off of a low bidder situation. I'm trying to be frugal with the taxpayer's money. Good luck. <laughs> okay. So, so let, me, let me ask the supervisor if there's a degree of conflict of interest. Not with the clo uh, closed bid. Okay. It was only closed until it was opened. Right. <laughs> All right, any more discussion before we go ahead and vote? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Oh, Joanne Shirky. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Sandy Kufout. Yes. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Christy Hilton. Yes. Artie Bryson. Yes. Cindy Valentine. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Mm -hmm. Next, we have a, a bill uh, from Bayview Engineering <clears throat> on the Falker Road construction project. Just want to explain to the board and other people. This is a little out of the ordinary, but we we do, this does come up and it'll probably come up again in the near future. <clears throat> Project control engineering is our is our uh, uh, township engineering firm. Um, a lot of townships and cities, when a project comes before them, uh, they want every everything coming before a planning commission to have their engineering stamp on it which is very costly point blank to the applicants we basically leave it up to our building inspector if he deems you know this project is fairly big um it needs to get a engineering review then we, we pass it off to our engineers. Because an engineering review costs between two and, for a general one, costs between two and $4,000. And for every person and applicant going before our uh, planning commission, that would be two to $4,000 more in fees, which a lot of times aren't necessary. That being said, that not every project we, that comes before us gets an engineering uh, um, evaluation done on the site um, for us to say to project control you can't do any engineering on any projects in the township uh, wouldn't be fair because it, they'd be turning down more business than the township gives them does that make sense so 
If project control actually does the engineering on a project, we don't have them review and give us us an opinion on their own work. That that doesn't you know that wouldn't be uh, ethical and does not make sense. So if there's a a project that comes before us that uh, we want a, a opinion and uh, uh, of, of an engineer, if project control does that engineering. <clears throat> We'll farm it out to a, a, another engineering company. And a lot of the times we use uh, Bayshore Engineering LLC. A lot of people know him. That's Matt Mueller. Um, Bayview. What's that? Bayview. Bayview. Yeah, you yeah. said Bayshore. Bayview. Oh, I did, I'm sorry. It's Bay, <coughs> Bayview Engineering. I'm sorry. So um, that's why that, that this, this is in our packet. Uh, I just want to approve this bill that we pay for because it's not going to our normal uh, engineering firm that the, uh, that, uh, the township uses. So um, yeah, just to, uh, excuse me, already, <clears throat> just to elaborate a little bit on that, uh, the Planning Commission did approve the uh, original uh, concept and the site plan. Uh, there were some questions that did come up as far as the wetlands are concerned and the drainage. And uh, this was the right thing to do, getting a uh, <clears throat> uh, different engineering firm to go ahead and take a look at that, just to make sure that the township is is, is on the safe side of all of this. So, right. uh, yeah, good job on that. So, I just want to bring it to everyone's okay. attention <clears throat> that, um, and we will have uh, one or two of these coming in the near future too. We got some big projects coming up on the township. So I'll I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, the uh, engineering construction costs of uh, two thousand four hundred thirty three dollars and sixty four cents to Bayview Engineering LLC. Support. 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 Okay, and we have support. Uh, discussion two. This is this will be re, uh, recouped in fees to the app from the applicant uh, for this. Mm -hmm. So it's not money out of the township. It's basically, you know, we're going we're gonna to charge the applicant this $2,433. So we have a motion to support. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next we have uh, approval of a KCI uh, bill to, uh, as for our tax. Coming out, is it for yep, this is the printing and mailing of our tax bills. Uh, the, it's no change in company. KCI has been printing, since I've been here, they've been printing all of our bills. Uh, I'm not sure how long before that, but this is just uh, an estimate. We're estimating 5,200 bills, and um, the postage for 5,200 bills would be $1,965.60, and the printing would be $828, so $2,793.60. Is that a motion? Yes. Support. Motion and support. And just so everybody knows, we've done multiple studies on this. This company, KCI, can do it much cheaper than we can print and mail it out. Uh, just the mailing alone. For us to mail it at what 49 or for, what is it now 40 cents a uh, 50 cents no, 50, 50 less, cents uh, uh, envelope uh, it costs us mm -hmm. a lot more Man to do power. it in house than to, to sub this out. So we have motion support for uh, KCI to do our tax billing at an estimate of twenty seven hundred ninety three dollars and sixty cents. Uh, any more discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> all right. Board member comments. Cindy, do you have anything? Um, I think it was a pretty exciting meeting. We got a lot accomplished, I yeah. feel like. Um, glad to see the vape ordinance um, for the schools. I know it's a huge problem over there. Um, and like Chris had said, a big distraction. I'm um, glad to see us moving forward with doing something over on the island with the fire station. Um, hopefully that'll make it a little bit more accommodable for our firefighters to want to spend some time over there. Mm -hmm. And welcome Anthony Yarrow. <laughs>
Mark? Uh, good job uh, tonight, <coughs> Cindy. Good job on the uh, uh, cloud payment. <laughs> and uh, welcome, Anthony. Yeah. I'll just repeat this, what, all yeah. that Cindy yeah, said. Yeah, what she said. And uh, welcome, Mr. Yarrow, to our staff. Sandy? Well, I missed the last meeting, unfortunately, and I heard that Mr. Latos came in and gave a report on the resource officer. So I wasn't here, but I saw it. So I want to thank him for coming in, and I hope he continues to update us on how that's going. I also wanted to say congratulations to George, our chief, for hiring some very respectful men in his department the last couple of meetings. I've actually had two or three run-ins outside of the township with a couple of the new hires, and they represented our township very well, and I didn't bring to light that I was a trustee. We just were having regular conversation, whether they knew or not, and um, it was very impressive. So congratulations on that. Looking forward to see everybody at Scarecrow Fest. That was a lot of fun last year, and it seems yeah. like it's going to be bigger and better this year. Thank you. Chris? Thanks. Yeah, I hope the, uh, the residents of Harsons Island um, watch this meeting tonight, and I hope that they see we're honoring our commitments that we've made several months ago to improve the first response services to the island. We have spent money on equipment. We're now spending money on the building. The chief's gonna, done a great job of hiring new firefighters to service our, our area. Um, I just hope that, um, that they recognize that and we're operating um, in sync with one another. Um, this has been a difficult year and a half uh, through the fire department, um, and, I, and I see a lot of positive success. And I want to thank the chief uh, for all your efforts and your hard work and sticking to it when the going was real tough. Um, we're making significant progress. We're not finished, um, but I'm I'm grateful uh, for the decisions that the board's made and where we stand at this point. Uh, Algonac football has their last home game. This Friday night, 7 p.m. against Southfield Bradford. Go Rats. So, go Rats. Go Muskrats. Thank you. Chrissy? I would agree with everything that everyone has said tonight. I'm proud of the things that we're doing and going to continue to do to improve. Thank you. I just expound on that. I mean, right now, I think we're staffing the island three to four days a week. Um, when these. Uh, we, in the past month, we hired nine new guys. I think, Chief, you got some more applicants still. So uh, we'll, we'll probably get a few more. And once these guys get on online and stuff, you know, hoping that we'll be able to, you know, five, six days. We're working towards our goal for seven days a week, you know, 24-7. Um, and, and it's going great. Uh, I think we're... Uh, we're, we're getting close to where we want to be, not quite, but we're getting there. And uh, every every day is a little better. I know there's a few more grants coming up. Uh, we're going to try to get an, a grant for an engine or some kind of vehicle. Is that right, Chief? Yeah. We're in the process of writing it. And uh, uh, may, maybe a, a couple other things, too. We've been very successful in the FEMA grants. Uh, there is only one fire department in the whole county that received any FEMA grants this year, and that was us, and we got two. Uh, um, one was uh, just a grant for ourselves for, for ventilation systems, and another one we went in with, we, we wrote it, but we went in with Algonac and Marine City for uh, Safety Scott Packs, and I think the total amount of that grant was over 500000 that we received, and we just received those uh, this past week or two. And uh, so uh, we've been very successful with that. And uh, um, we're getting there. It's a process. So I also like to, I'm, I'm very thankful. This October has been busy with lots of stuff. This Yesterday we had Dogapalooza <laughs> in the park with a bunch of crazy dogs running around. And, and we had, it was very successful. Uh, 
uh, event. I told Cindy, you know, we got so much stuff going in uh, October. We're going to move that to a spring event probably in May. And uh, we'll amp that up and make it bigger and better. Uh, I'm not sure how many dogs we had in the park, but it was, it was way fun. Were they all dressed up? What's that? Were they all dressed no, up? No, no, none were dressed up. But, you know, we had people from, uh, oh, the Humane Society there, different groups. We had some groomers giving tips and teaching how people to cut their nails. Uh, we had a dog massage therapist, believe it or not. My dogs would love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we had, we had uh, therapy dogs there. We had all, it, it, was, it was a good event. And, and uh, uh, raised money for the Humane Society and some other things. And, uh, and uh, a lot of other people heard about, it. hey, we want to be involved next time. And, you know, that's how that stuff usually works. I mean, we threw it together pretty quick. A couple months ago, we thought about it. We just, without even thinking, oh, let's do it in October. Okay. Well, October is a real busy month with all the Halloween stuff. So we're going to move that to a May event probably. And uh, that worked out really well. And I'm really looking forward to the Scarecrow Fest. It's, uh, That's always a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And uh, you know, it's all paid for pretty much by sponsors, which is better yet, as in all our events are. So looking forward to it. Other than that, if someone has something for the next meeting, let me know. And I'll entertain a motion. Motion, motion to adjourn. Support. Hey, all in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, thanks for coming, everybody.